Okay, welcome back. This is uh, the next episode of At the Time of the End. And uh, we are continuing in Isaiah 24 because there's so much in Isaiah 24. We just really need to look at it closely and uh, so we don't miss anything. Because we're, we're living this and we will be living this or those who are left behind after a rapture will be living the latter half of uh, Isaiah 24. And it'll be a, a, a terrible time. It's uh, the time the, uh, the Bible uh, in the book of Revelations calls the Great Tribulation. So um, you don't want to be there for this. So become part of the Bride of Christ by selling out all that you have so that you can have all in Christ. We'll be looking at this even more as we study the church ages. So I invite you to go to the church ages and look at those teachings. And uh, especially the next section I'm going to be doing on the Church of Philadelphia. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. But let's finish up Isaiah 24 today if we can, okay? So um, I'm looking at verse uh, uh, 19 and verse 20. Uh, let's, let's review just a hair. Verse 18. Then it will be that he who flees the report of the disaster will fall into the pit. And he who climbs out of the pit will be caught in the snare. So we've d discussed this. We know what it is. The sound of the disaster is literally the sound of terror. The sound of terror. So the sound of terror, as the brown dwarf star gets closer to us, the sky sounds, which you can go to and still listen to on YouTube, uh, will become terrifying. In the, in the great book of the Egyptians' uh, account of the last passing of the brown dwarf star during the time of the Exodus, the Egyptians recorded that the sound of the star, and they, they said it was a loosened star, uh, but it was being controlled by the God of the Hebrews. They said the sound of the, of the, uh, the destroyer is what they called the star, uh, was terrifying to the point that it drove men mad. And even animals uh, went crazy at the sound of the terror. Well, this sound will be heard again. And people, when they hear it, they will run into the pits or their holes in the ground, their underground shelters. They will seek to be saved from this. In the book of Revelations, just for you to have a little bit of a, 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 a timeline here, this happens at the sixth seal, okay? The sixth seal. This is well into, it's about three years after the rapture, well into the Great Tribulation, and about uh, six months before the Battle of Armageddon. Okay, so when they climb out of the pit, they're caught in the snare. So they're, they're, they're caught, they're forced right then to become part of the world uh, system. Now, there may be a couple of fulfillments of this. And uh, the first fulfillment may happen actually uh, just after the rapture. Because uh, we know that there is uh, the brown dwarf star is uh, underneath our, uh, our uh, ecliptic right now. Uh, the earth is uh, passing by it uh, very closely. Right now it's June 4th, 2020. And uh, we have just had a major uptick in very large earthquakes. And it's because we're just about getting straight across our solar system from the brown dwarf star and the sun. July and August is when we have our greatest earthquakes and uh, because of where the brown dwarf star is. Um, this thing uh, could cause uh, people to flee to their underground shelters uh, early. I expect probably right after the rapture and then to come out and then to be forced into the mark of the beast. The final fulfillment of this though is at the sixth seal, which is described here. And let's read on and I'll show you. It goes on to say, for the windows above are opened and the foundations of the earth shake. This is the sixth seal. Verse 19, the earth is broken asunder. The earth is split through. The earth is shaken violently. This happens at the great earthquake at the sixth seal, uh, right after the martyrs are uh, resurrected and caught up to be with Jesus. And uh, so the uh, Christian martyrs who were murdered during the three years of the tribulation period uh, are caught up to be with Jesus at this time. And then the great earthquake, which shakes the earth violently, uh, uh, happens. This is verse 19. Verse 20, the earth reels to and fro like a drunkard and it totters uh, like a shack for its transgression is heavy upon it and it will fall never to rise again. So we see this in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 through 17, the sixth seal. 
also Revelation chapter 11, verses uh, 12 and 13. And it's interesting, notice this, brethren, that it says that the reason for this happening is because of transgressions. It says, for its transgression is heavy upon it. Well, that's uh, very interesting because it, it's, the earth itself can't transgress anything. The earth itself is subject to man. Man was the king over the earth. And when man fell through Adam and Eve, the earth was made subject to corruption or the, the, what we call the curse or, uh, and, uh, and decay because of man's sin. So the transgression that is heavy upon it is man's transgression. It's man's sin that is heavy upon the earth that is causing this to happen. Listen, the Lord could make that brown dwarf star disappear. He can make it turn around and go back where it came from without affecting us at all. But he's allowing it to affect us greatly, and it's because uh, um, of man's sin. It's because of man's sin. Now, bear with me for a moment here. Um, Okay, um, I'm going to move on. Uh, I'm trying to decide something. I want to go to um, Revelation chapter 11, first, starting at verse 18. And I want to show you something here before we leave here, before we just finish this out. And uh, it will just illustrate this point. Okay. Revelation chapter 11, verse 18 says, and the nations were enraged and thy wrath came and the time came for the dead to be judged and the time to give up their, re uh, to give their reward uh, to thy bondservants, the prophets and to the saints and to those who fear thy name, the small and the great. Now this says this very interesting thing at the end here, this last clause, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. Now it's interesting, the word destroy is literally to pervert, corrupt, or ruin. To pervert, corrupt, or ruin. And so it's literally saying, the Strong's number 1311, it's literally saying, look, those who have corrupted the earth, I'm going to corrupt them, the Lord's saying. Those who have ruined the earth, I'm going to ruin them. I'm going to ruin all their plans. I'm going to ruin all their schemes. I'm going to ruin all that they thought to do. I'm going to ruin their empire. I'm going to ruin their new thousand-year reign. I'm going to ruin their, their, uh, their perversions. I'm going to ruin their schemes. I'm going to ruin their witchcraft. I'm going to ruin their murders. Because it's all going to fall back on their own heads. And so what it's saying here, back in Isaiah verse 20, for its transgression is heavy upon it. It is those who transgressed upon the earth have brought the judgments on the earth. So brethren, think about that for a moment and, and imagine this. When you cry out to God and you say, oh Lord, why are you judging us? Oh Lord, why are bad things happening to the earth? I should have brought this in Michaela's questions, I suppose. But, oh Lord, why are all these terrible things happening and people are dying and the earth is being torn asunder and this brown dwarf star is corrupting the earth? When you cry that out, think about this verse. The reason is because of those who have brought their own corruption down upon the earth. Those who have brought murder, lying, thieving, stealing, uh, uh, adulteries of every kind. Those who have corrupted uh, the earth through their, their uncountable murders of both the, the, the super innocent, the babies, un, unborn babies, even those born, and the innocent people on the earth. We look at this and people just shrug their shoulders and say, oh, does God see? Does God know? Well, yes, he counts every single tear. He counts every sparrow that falls to the ground. The spirit of life is from him, and when it returns to him, he looks at the cause, and he knows. And, uh, and when, a, when a, a human cries out, he hears. And so the cries, even of the unborn, 
One of the most uh, uh, astonishing things I've ever heard of and I've ever seen is when those doctors did an ultrasound of a baby being aborted. And they found that as a machine that they put into the womb, into the uterus, uh, it was cutting blades and it was cutting the baby up from the feet up. When it reached the abdomen, uh, tearing the baby up uh, from the top of the legs and the hips up, the baby's head threw back in the womb. Its arms went up, it made fists and its mouth opened wide in a scream. And they named the, the movie Silent Scream. God heard that scream. And the blood of that innocent child is never forgotten. And that is the transgression, one of the transgressions, that is heavy on the earth. So when you cry out to God, why are these judgments falling? Why are these horrible things happening? Brethren, it's because of sin. It's because of the blood of the innocent. It's because of uh, 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 a man not repenting, refusing to repent, refusing to turn back to God. Brethren, cry out to God for repentance. Cry out to God and, and give your heart to the Lord. Cry out to God uh, to escape all these things that are coming upon the earth. And Christians, separate yourself from the beast, from the harlot church, which even today has changing its name to Chrislam. It's supposed to be Christianity and Islam uh, merged together. But listen, the Catholicism, Catholicism has always been about being a universal church that brings in all the religions of the world together. It's the harlot church. Separate yourself, the Bible says. Be not partakers with their sins. You will not be partakers with their plagues. Okay, moving on. So it will happen that day verse 21, that the Lord will punish the hosts of heaven on high and the kings of the earth on earth. Well, what does this mean? What does this mean? On that day, it says, on that day that the earth rolls over, on the earth, the day that the sixth seal happens, brethren. Listen, it's not talking about the battle of Armageddon. Where at the end of it, Satan is, is bound for a thousand years. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about at the sixth seal. On that day, it will happen in that day that the Lord will punish the hosts of heaven on high and the kings of the earth on earth. Well, what's he talking about? In that day, it's the day of all these judgments. It's not just talking about the day that the earth rolls over on its side. It's talking about the beginning of those judgments. Because, let's face it, the beginning of the, the punishment of the kings is when people first go underground. When they first go underground, which I believe happens right after the rapture, like I said. Listen, it isn't just one event. It's several events. It's several things that happen. So it's just like a lot of the plagues. A lot of the plagues that we see uh, uh, with the four horsemen riding, they've already begun. They've been going for years. They, uh, they really started strong in January of 2011. But what we see is they get worse and worse and worse. And right after the rapture, it's like these be the beginning of these plagues that were warnings really to the world take off with full power and nothing holding them back anymore. And uh, it's the same with this. When this begins, which I believe will happen right at the end of the, uh, right when the rapture happens and the Laodicean church is left behind. When this begins, that's when the Lord is going to begin judging the kings of the earth and also the hosts of heaven on high. Now that sounds really strange. How can that be? A lot of people teach um, that uh, the hosts of heaven on high uh, have, were punished uh, uh, back at the beginning of the uh, creation. I'm going to come right back on the next segment and I'm going to explain to you what he means by the punishment of the hosts on heaven. Uh, the host of heaven, excuse me, on high. Okay? Come right back and I'll explain it. Lord bless. <laughs> 